Can you guess what the most cultivated and irrigated crop in America is? Homes, golf courses, and playing fields may grow more acres of turf grass than farmers devote to corn, wheat, and fruit trees combined. Now don't get me wrong, I love our public green spaces just fine. But let's face it, urban brown spaces and empty lots are just sad. But what can we do about it? Well, meet Max. Max grows food like any other farmer. He sells his produce to client families, restaurants, and at the farmer's market. Max's farm is located in a city core neighborhood and burrows small yard plots around the community. It's easy to click the like button on sustainable ideas. It's another thing to put them into practice. But that's exactly what Max is doing. It's Green Wheel Farms. I started it because literally I looked in the mirror and couldn't stand looking at myself anymore and had to make a change um, in everything I was doing in my life a lot of things I've done throughout the whole my whole life has sort of been a cul culmination of, of leading up to this there's a lot of periods in my life like uh, it just seemed so random but then it, it's all fitting in now to what I'm doing the consensus seems to be that it's not so much a, a, we, we have we lack in food we lack in the space for the food um, and that's part of what I'm doing. Like I've, I've watched my friends, third generation in farming, say, I don't want to do it. And they sell off the parcels of land. And, and, and then eventually all the farmland's gone to subdivision. We're losing our farmland. You know, I, I looked into urban farming. Um, and from urban farming, I come across spin farming. And it just seemed like such a natural. Small plot intensive farming. So you've seen my beds. They're, they're intensive, they're packed. There's, there's no nice little spaces in between the vegetables. There's rows to walk through and that's it. The whole bed is, is when it's mature, it's just a canopy of vegetables. It's, I don't have to use, I don't have to buy any land. I, I, I rent land for food, basically, for the spin farming. Um, I have this space, I rent this property. I, I live here, I rent here. Um, the landlord's been gracious enough to let me use the property to do what I want to do. He's a, a local guy in Belleville that, um farms in the city. Uh, so he's a city farmer. He's one of a rare breed of people who doesn't own any land, doesn't uh, have a farm, but he's a full-time farmer nonetheless. So that's who Max is. He's an urban farmer. Well, I stopped by one day. I wanted to try some samples that he dropped to see uh, if I were interested in some local products. So I did, uh, I got some samples, I tried it and I called him back right away. So now we'll see him every week. They're very fresh, and he uh, he won't send me something that he don't doesn't think would be good to serve. So that's a good thing about it. So and not all his bodies so far have been terrific. So well, I can't quite remember how whether Max just showed up or I encouraged him to come to one of the meetings. We kicked off the community garden thing by approaching a 
the city obviously came up and said, uh, yes, you can use Ponton Park, and we started getting organized. And anything that I could do or uh, initiate that would look at urban gardening, I was in favor of. And so when Max came to see me and he said, got this idea, got this thing with the, with the wheels, spin gardening, you know, immediately went and looked it up and checked it out. And uh, I thought, wow, cool, do it. And he kind of looked at me and said, what do you mean to do it? I said, Max, just do it. You, you don't need to get permits or licenses or anything. You want to do it, you do it. And he said, well, I, I said, go for it. I said, if you have any problems, you come and see me. <laughs> anyway, of course, there's no yet uh, any, any uh, city bylaws about uh, urban gardening. Well, I met Max at the farmer's market and we started talking about juicing because he had a large bag of sunflower sprouts and um, asked me to see if uh, I'd be interested in it and I started talking about how to juice and he said well you seem to know a lot about juicing and uh, you know you might be interested in my CSA. <laughs> so I went to the farm to see what a CSA was about because I had never heard of a CSA and so he explained the whole process to me and how he got into it and um, it was just so exciting to one pull up into the front yard and see this amazing <laughs> plethora of goodness there but what I thought was very cool was the energy and the passion he had when he spoke and you see that when you look at the beds, I mean, they're clean, everything's trimmed, he, he's meticulous about everything. It, it's fabulous to have happened to be introduced to him and now he's my new friend in Belleville. Max's example really challenges us to do more about food security and land usage. Yeah, that's nice and all. But you're not a farmer. Well, that's not exactly true. Most homeowners have learned to care for that nice green status symbol covering most of their yard. Turns out this gives you the skills to grow food. Can you see where I'm going with this? I notice in some of the larger cities now that there are bylaws that are coming in to, to uh, prevent people from turning their front lawns into you know vegetable gardens, which is kind of sad, but I think as long as the pressure is on and as long as the, uh, this movement is, is gaining momentum, I don't think they're going to be able to stop people from planting both front and back gardens. We spend that much time, money, energy, watering, mowing, fertilizing. God, just for a patch of green. I think, I think lawns are a fetish. I can't believe people go out to the country. They buy five acres, build a monster house, take out all the trees and plant sod and spend the rest of their lives on a lawn tractor. Boggles my mind. You know, we're in a little bit of a um, food desert in the downtown. There's no big grocery store down here or anything. And starting to think about the bigger ideas of food security. I really enjoyed a lot of what he had to say about the use of land in downtown city cores. I loved what he had to say about food distribution in, in city centers and I thought this is something I'd really like to learn more about and be a part of. So I sought him out at the Belleville Farmers Market and now he is my class's farmer, Farmer Max. And uh, he's come out to our garden plot, he's shared some of his own food with the kids and uh, my students, their eyes are just like, like this, thinking about their farmer, Farmer Max. Locally grown, um, 
The other is knowing who I'm buying from. Uh, that's the big thing for me. Um, I see him weekly. I see what's going on, what's happening to the food that he's growing that eventually makes it to my table. And um, I'm a passionate cook in the kitchen and my produce has to be beautiful because I love to plate my food. <laughs> and I'm all about energy. Uh, when I meditate uh, and think about my food and where it comes from, it's even better when I know the farmer and the energy that he's put into it. So it makes it easier when I cook or make a dish if there's already good energy in the food. Converting or repurposing unused land or even part of your yard can foster community and educate people by showing tangible ways of sustaining our most basic need. Years ago in grade school, I went to the Frink Center and the way they educated, it's always stuck with me. Um, we just wandered through the woods in the middle of winter, learned about porcupines and other winter type animals, but it's always stuck with me that. And you know, at the end of the, the long cold walk, we're all wet and, and there was like beans and wieners roasting or in a big pot on an open fire, you know, and we ate that. And that whole experience lasted with me forever. So I, I always thought it'd be so cool to work with kids doing something, like leaving an impression with them like that, something that's lasting. Showing people in the community a way of growing food that, you know, we don't have a land um, shortage. We have all sorts of land. We're just not using it effectively. And I picked all of this up off the internet over the winter of 2013 and 14. Um, I just sort of went down a rabbit hole and knew I wanted to do some sort of educating about food, and plan and and uh, just create an education center is sort of what I had in mind. He's very proud of what he does, and uh, he mentioned it to me that he was going to be just teaching how to uh, gardening, to do gardening and stuff. So I think it's a very good idea for for the young kids for those days to know how to do proper gardening and eating some local vegetables and. Basically, uh, it's a good thing. I just think it's fantastic that um, he's not only educating the local people about what it means to grow food locally, he's trying to educate people online as well through his Facebook. He's a one-man person shop. We totally had the capacity, the intellectual capacity, the human power capacity, and the access to space and resources to totally be self-sustaining. So Max is doing that, and it's only his first year. So it was like 17 homes in the downtown core that he had, and using old flower beds that were nothing, and planting 250 bulbs of garlic in it. Like, what's the better use of space? tiger lilies that are dead or 250 bulbs of garlic that are growing. And so it really makes you rethink of how we use our front yards and our backyards. And he's doing it. So I think that's the big idea is that people like Max show the rest of us that we're able to feed ourselves and our neighbors. It's amazing. You know, why aren't we eating good food? We have the space to do it. Um, we have the means to do it. We have the seeds to do it. Um, people share seeds. People specifically grow seeds to sell that are heirloom and, and heritage and organic. And so everything is out there. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like if, if we all grew food in, in this area, just down this block, we'd have more than enough food. We could start giving that food out. There's opportunity for, for rooftop gardening. There's, there's green walls. There's all sorts of ways to grow food in the core. And that's, what, that's, that's my master plan is to educate on all of these things. There's so many ways to grow food. So it's raised beds, it's organic. We no, use no pesticides or anything in the garden. We use all our natural organic uh, compost in the garden as well. And we use heritage seeds. We do collect seeds at the end of the season. So the garden started in 2009. This was a vacant, dirty old lot. And I had to do it very affordably because I couldn't have ongoing costs like water. Our garden shed was donated by the Sonquin Lakeshore School Board. All the beds were raised by our volunteers. So we were very lucky last year, Lowe's came and donated all these concrete uh, 
blocks. And so we started block gardening. So we can actually expand our gardening more. But everything is volunteer driven. We do to get a summer student that is the, supposedly in the garden watering and harvesting each day. And we have volunteers. Uh, we have two dedicated volunteers in the garden every Wednesday night. It is to provide fresh produce to our clients and to educate people that you do have green space to grow things. You would be surprised, like little gardens that you have, that you could be growing your tomatoes and your onions and your chives and your uh, green peppers. Like, you know, flowers are pretty, but food is important. And it's good to know where your food comes from. It's good to teach your children how to take care of things. If they can't have a pet in an apartment, they could take care of a tomato plant. Teach responsibility for a child to grow their, their tomato plant or their green pepper plant. But it's really important for people to realize all the possible little green spaces they have to grow. Gleaners, we received the um, uh, most sustainable food bank across Ontario award last year and we've been listed as the greenest food bank in Canada. Not only because of the garden, it's the rain harvesting. So we use it as a teaching tool. We, have, uh, we usually have about four schools through a season and we have groups that come in. Uh, we have a team from the Knights of Columbus Squires come in every spring to rotate the gardens and move the manure all over the place because we got a, a sheep manure uh, which is good for the garden. We also, you see a lot of pails everywhere in the garden. Those pails are actually transplanted plants to seniors in affordable housing. We moved 250 pails this year. Some of them actually stayed at seniors as patio plants. Some got planted right into the soil. So we start them and develop them. But we also have like an outside bed for people who live in the area. They can get a tomato or I, I see all the onions are gone because <laughs> we had a big crop of onions up there and they've been all gone, which is I love. I would hate to see them rot. As this becomes an education center, it's going to be left to the city um, down the road. And, you know, it's, 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 it's meant to have kids coming and learning and being part of and growing food. That's what I'm doing with this place. The spin farming is really a means for me to make an income um, until the education center starts. But it's also creating an awareness to a lot of people in this community that there is another way. You know, um, we've got a beautiful farmer's market. Lots of farmers bring in stuff that they grow. We've, we've got a lot of access to food around here, and we're lucky in that sense, but there's a lot of areas that don't. So just getting the message out, it's that, and that's why I feel it's important to work with the kids, because parents are going to if they have to, or if they really seriously want to make a change. But if a kid is coming home saying this is what they want, that parent's going to make that change. And that's the idea, the, the, the bigger picture the master plan is just to get people involved in their food and, and their lifestyles again. Max is living what he wants to teach us, and that's the most powerful part. There are other examples and opportunities. Anyone can do this, as long as you take time to care for it. Get outside, be active, live healthier, and mostly, have fun.